Oh, hi there. So right now I'm actually packing up the office because I'm going to be moving into an apartment with my fiance here in just about a week. So right now I'm just having to go through my entire collection and put stuff into boxes. And this is actually kind of fun for me since I have so many crazy awesome games that they sort of slip my mind sometimes. It's a great reminder of all these great gems that sometimes I'm just not sitting here playing nearly enough. What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here, and today I wanted to talk about a classic classic Sega console that not nearly enough people actually get hyped about. Let's dig into the Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive, and really just get hyped about all the good stuff this library had on my picks of the top 10 best Sega Genesis games. Number 10. Shining Force 2. During the 80s and 90s, every single person was sort of talking about the console war. The idea that Nintendo and Sega were competing against each other to have the very best games and graphics. But Shining Force 2 was probably the first project I saw that seemed to have just impossibly good visuals. This is an RPG that is just staggering in its art and the basic way that battles just unfold. It's one of those games that's just kind of impressive to go back to even in the modern day because it is just so so freaking sharp and clear in its vision. It's one of those things that's probably aged the best from this era and certainly something you need to go back and give a shot to. Number 9. Earthworm Jim. When it comes to licensed games, many of them are pretty paltry. They're essentially just churned out because of the title and nothing else. But Earthworm Jim is really the exception to that rule, because it's actually pretty marvelous. The thing here is the fact that it's actually like a 2D platformer, but one that really tries to just constantly give you lots of different layers of things to look at. It's very heavily rooted, of course, in the mythology of the TV show, but when you're trying to use your different powers and grapple hooking around, you can kind of just sit back and wonder what's coming next. I like a game that can constantly just be filled with so many surprises and so many goofy bosses and have such a great sense of humor while also being serious when it needs to be. Number 8. Gunstar Heroes there was this interesting phenomena that sort of popped up during this time period, which is the running gun shooter. These are games that seem so simplistic on the surface because they just seemingly have one simple goal, which is to shoot everything, but are actually rather complex. They're something that feels very, very good as soon as you pick up the controller. Anything that's sort of in this genre is actually very, very addictive simply because there's a very interesting methodology hidden within it. It's not just about ducking and dodging and diving, it's also a matter of trying to score that next big shot and basically pick up all the power-ups you need to try and survive the next boss. It's not exactly freaking complicated, it's not exactly something that's going to be the dark souls of 2D shooters, but it's still super marvelous. And Gunstar Heroes manages to surpass a lot of its rivals uh, just by having pure talent in it. I mean seriously, if you ever get a chance to try this, absolutely do it because you won't regret it. Number 7. Battle Toads. This game is obviously very, very famous for being nearly impossible to beat. It loves to throw so much into your path, from really tough enemies, to waves of freaking bad guys, to even stuff like, of course, the Turbo Tunnel, a mission that basically is made to only soak up your lives. But despite this, Battletoads at the center of it is actually a very, very good beat-em-up. And what's funny is that the Genesis version is actually the easiest version of it. Every single enemy manages to hits a little bit softer and you get a lot more lives. So even though it's not going to be as challenging as the other versions of Battletoads, I actually like this one the most. It seems like the one that seems the most true to life of what I would want a game like this to be. And of course, since it's co-op, it's really nice to just grab a buddy, become Toads, and do some battles. Number 6. Fantasy Star 4 
When it comes to ultra-hardcore role-playing games, I feel like inspiration is a huge part of it. What is it that really pushed the developers to start working on the project in the first place? Were they moved by things like Lord of the Rings and want to make things that have elves and magic, or are they actually inspired by anime? It's this that I believe was actually a giant driving force in the creation of the Fantasy Star franchise, but when it comes to 4 specifically, this is the one, in my opinion, where they finally found their footing. This game is spectacular from start to finish, with its cool mythology, fantastic weird space stuff, and I like the fact that there's just so much freaking weirdness in this, along with the stupendous cutscenes. Seriously, if you want a great example of what creative developers could do with the Genesis's hardware, this is absolutely it. And still, it's one of those games that I wish would come forward onto every single console, because everybody needs needs a chance to realize that Fantasy Star 4 was way, way ahead of its time. Number 5. Altered Beasts in my mind's eye, this game will always be one of the most iconic Sega classics. I mean, so much about this is so much built into memes and meme culture. Things like Rise From Your Grave and the evil laughter of a bad guy just randomly running away instead of being stopped and going, ha 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 ha. This game is great. Now, obviously, it's very, very simplistic and basic, but that's sort of what's the charm about it. You can beat this game in like an hour, but even still, you'll find yourself going back through it again and again. Each of the different levels, you get a chance to become a different altered beast. A dragon, a bear, a weird creature that can just shoot punch lasers for no reason. And that's kind of what's the best part about this. Altered Beasts is not trying to be Mozart. It's not trying to be a high classy art piece. It's just trying to be itself. And in that way, I actually love and respect it for that. Number 4. Streets of Rage 2 On a dark and dusty night, a man sets out with a single vision in his mind. Revenge. To try and defeat anybody who sets into his path until the city is a better place. This is actually the story of Streets of Rage 2, and you probably didn't even know that, because nobody even cares. Streets of Rage 2 is so freaking popular simply because it is seriously the greatest beat-em-up ever. I mean, look at it! It's you walking along and just pounding everybody in the face. You can pick up knives and beer bottles, and you're going to be fighting robots and trying to climb into different towers and trying to take on millionaire kung fu artists. Nothing about this game makes sense, and that is why it is such a gem. It's one of those games that you can play alone or co-op or no matter what because you're going to have a freaking blast. Now this has obviously been included in every single Sega collection that's been on basically every console and I'm glad they've done that because seriously Streets of Rage 2 is hilarious in all the right ways and something you absolutely need to beat before you die. Number 3. Zombies Ate My Neighbors Here's a little fun fact you may not know, but in certain parts of the world, Zombies Ate My Neighbors was actually censored. Yes, that's right. Particular countries weren't a big fan of all the blood and violence in it, so they actually made them remove certain aspects of it or alter certain monsters to make it not quite so frightening, which is kind of funny because when it comes to the Sega Genesis, they let them put everything in there. This is seriously the bloodiest version of the game, and I love that for that. So Zombies Ate My Neighbors is basically a spoof of horror movies. You're playing through a series of levels that go from zombies to giant babies to alien invasions, and all along, it never takes itself too serious. It's sort of about just trying to grab the neighbors and go to the next level, and increasingly, it gets more bizarre. I've actually never beaten this game simply because it goes on so long that I always end up running out of lives. I've actually thought about just basically getting a Game Shark or something so I could finally just see how this story really ends, because it's so eccentric and so bizarre that eventually I gotta see it through to figure out if I really managed to stop all these dang zombies. Number 2. Castlevania Bloodlines 
Until this very day, this is actually considered to be one of the very rarest games in the entire Castlevania saga, simply because while everybody else was actually buying these games like crazy on Nintendo consoles, this one managed to sneak out on Sega hardware, and it's very strange to me because it feels very, very different. Castlevania Bloodlines is trying to tinker a lot more with the idea of combat. There's so many different types of enemies all coming at you at once, and there's so many different kinds of magic you can pick up. I I love Castlevania Bloodlines, but part of the charm of it is really the fact that this is something that doesn't really have that same spirit of anything else in this entire saga. I love that though. It's so cool to see a game that was clearly just a little one-off experiment. They wanted this game to be good, but they also wanted it to be good in a way that would be unique, and in that way, they absolutely succeeded. I love fighting all the bosses and getting lost and playing as both the characters because it's just something that manages just to stick in your mind for years and years. Number 1. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 it's pretty difficult to ignore the fact that this little blue blur is somebody who managed to sell a lot of consoles. I mean, let's face it, he was the face of Attitude. He was the edgy little mascot of Sega, but I do believe that it's this game in particular that managed to really give them an edge. Because, let's face it, Sonic 2 is great. I mean, seriously, it might be one of the very best Sega games ever created because every aspect of it is so tight. It has really good design. It's got really fast graphics, it's got really really good music, and it's got a really nice world setting where every couple levels you find yourself in a totally different backdrop from chemical zone to casino zone to even something like just the basic green hill zone. You're constantly being shifted back and forth like Sonic himself. It very much feels like it's challenging you to just constantly adapt, adapt, adapt. Can you manage to shift yourself mentally into the space to handle that next big fight? You know, even after having played this as a kid and as an adult, I still managed to just be really, really impressed by all the raw talent they managed to shove onto such a tiny cartridge. And for that reason, I awarded this my pick as the very best Genesis game. Did your favorite game not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. As I'm sure you've noticed, I've actually been packing a lot this entire week, which is why my shirt's actually really dirty. So if I look a little bit sleepy or overly freaking Red Bulled up for the next couple of videos, uh, I apologize. But thank you guys so much for dealing with this, bearing with me, and helping to make my life so freaking awesome. You guys are the best, and seriously, from the bottom of my heart, keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.